Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with the news and it's February 2nd, 2022. I uh, yes, I missed last week. I was in Barcelona doing some stuff for work and I even took the camera and I was gonna shoot from a super cool angle, but I couldn't after they closed the shop, they wouldn't let me stay to record the news. Also yesterday couldn't do it. So today we have news on Wednesday. Um, so let's start. First of all, uh, the news is sponsored by Analog Spotlight a group of photographic retailers and manufacturers who have joined together to support analog photographic media and help keep analog photography thriving worldwide. The brands are Camera Dactyl, Cosmo Photo, Chroma Cameras, Riveni Labs, Reality So Subtle, Intrepid Cameras, Pixelator, Brooklyn Film Camera, Ondu Cameras, Standard Cameras, 20th Century Cameras, Pictorographica, Analog Wonderland, Cinestill, Large Format Camera Store, Carmesita Film Lab, RH Designs, Arzimago, and Elvandi Camera. So thank you for the sponsors for keeping the news open to everybody and being so nice with me uh, when I skip the news. So, um, do the work. Basically, first of all, we'll start with the news. One Instant has finally done their math. They have checked that their numbers don't add up and their film is losing them money. So they've changed the price as of already. Now a pack of three one instant shots is 49 euros in without shipping. So that comes down to quite a bit of money per shot considering that it's a single shot every time. And my biggest concern, and I think we all should be with our biggest concerns is the fact that they're using uh, pods from 20 by 24, not made in house and also they're using paper or the receiver that is from old stock from 20 by 24 film uh, or Polaroid film. Uh, basically, doesn't seem that they're looking at the future of the product and if they haven't even done the numbers for the film, leaves me with a little bit of questions if they've done the numbers about maybe making actual new product 100%. Uh, very, very scared of the future of uh, peel apart film. But if you're one of those that enjoys it and doesn't mind whatever the price, let's keep supporting them because it is important to support some uh, initiatives that, you know, could bring us packed film as obviously Fuji is not going to turn the machines back on. Then we have a documentary called Revival. Um, the do documentary is Revival, the film to bring back film. This is a Kickstarter all about the industry and the photographers and the people loving film and the art of film. It's uh, based on a director based in Australia. They're asking for 254,000 US dollars, which might be the right amount for making a good documentary, but it seems very high for coming out of nowhere. Nobody knew this was coming and so on. Hopefully they'll reach their goal, but they've already been up for like around a week by now and they had only had like sixteen, seventeen thousand uh, $17,000 as of yesterday when I start, uh, did the script. So honestly, I hope they do. I would love to see more things about film photography and making content myself and seeing how things go towards the future of film. I think we need more eyes uh, aware of this that are not in the photography scene. So a documentary would be great. And if you can't support it, just share it. Share it like I did in the news. Tell your friends, your family, hey, you want to support a documentary on something I love? This is a way to do it. Maybe for Christmas, maybe for your birthday, you can help them out. Talking about other uh, ventures that don't always work, we have Goertz with a Trial Plan 35 f2.8 lens. As you know, Gortz basically came back, then had a very bad accident with their CEO, kind of closed shop, never, never gave lenses to a lot of their backers. Then uh, with the bankruptcy, they also admitted that some of the lenses were just rebranded Chinese lenses or so I remember, might be wrong on that. And now they are again making lenses, but this time in actual Germany. If I'm not wrong, in Hamburg, they show you how they make the lenses. You can make an appointment, go there, check it. Well, now they have a 35 millimeter f2.8 bubble bokeh, which uh, has 11 different mounts. So be it you are mirrorless shooter, uh, Leica shooter, Leica L shooter, whatever you want to shoot, basically almost iPhone too, because uh, 11 mounts sounds like more mounts that we have cameras. 
One thing to note is for us film shooters, it comes in Canon EF mount, so you can actually mount it on film cameras, and uh, Nikon F mount, and you could also probably uh, mount, oh, they do make M mount, but it is not rangefinder coupled, so you need live view to check that. So just in case somebody was wanting to use it on a Leica M. Talking about new products, we have Camera Dactyl launching Rex uh, camera. The Rex camera has been hinted in uh, the YouTube channel in an instant. He made a really good review and video. I recommend you watch it because if you're interested, but it's basically a camera built around the normal graph lock uh, back. The normal graph lock back is a graph lock four by five back for Instax wide film made by Lomography. So. It's a back, basically ejects the film, charges with USB or something like it, and lets you shoot Instax wide with 4x5 cameras. The problem is 4x5 camera shoots this big film, but you're shooting a teeny weeny thing. So Camera Dactyl has made the Rex camera to use the normal graph lock and shoot with Mamiya press lenses, the Polaroid Goose or the press lenses. And he even made a little adapter if you want to shoot with like 6x9 and so on with a ground glass to compose. These are made in lots, so he makes, or batches, he makes batches and then they sell, so he doesn't do so much on demand. But he has almost sold out of the first batch, which is good news. And like I said, Camera Doctor is a sponsor, super cool dude, Ethan's awesome. So go check it out. Plus it has a plethora of colors and Cosmo. He made one that was gold, which is super interesting and fun. Uh, Ethan's fun for sure. Then we have a the new Flick Film Factory. I've mentioned Flick Film a few times. They're based in Canada, making chemistry for film photographers, black and white, color. Uh, they make a eco-friendly paper developer that they claim is the only one, even though Adox makes it too, or similar with ascorbic acid. But that's cool that it's in the US because you can get it there. And they're currently uh, selling in Canada major retailers, working towards the US and also Europe. But the cool thing is they've built basically a factory for making the components and the chemistry in-house. So basically they are having five lines, if I'm not wrong, and building a sixth line with no chemical, uh, basically contaminations between them all in-house, which is very interesting. Do remember that basically, I think except for Adox, who made a basic uh, chemical plant in Germany, this is the only other one I know of made recently. So that's good news for us film shooters. They make, like I said, lots of black and white products and so on go check their website. But if you are based in Canada, you've already heard of them. Cool to see, they actually have a shop. There's the building, then there's like a gallery or something else and then a uh, the, uh, shop. So I guess they're the same owners. Then we have a Rockstar, not Rockstar, Rockstar, sorry. 40 millimeters f 5.6 for Leica M. Seems to be rangefinder coupled. Rockstar made a lens back in a while ago that was pretty inexpensive. This 40 millimeter f 5.6 for Leica M has aperture, uh, so you can select your aperture. Has focusing, seems to be coupled, and is coming at around 190 US dollars on eBay and so on. Also from Rockstar, and this is for Leica M cameras. Also, Rockstar has a 10 millimeter f 8 fixed focus fisheye lens for like a M cameras, which is like a lens cap. Also on Alibaba, eBay, and so on. So if you're into different experimental lenses and don't wanna get a Leica lens for your Leica camera or whatever, you can go ahead and check them out. Then we have a device sent to me via email, which I very much appreciate called the Henry Rotation Machine. Uh, this is for the Patterson tank, you know, it has a little spindle that you move, never used it, actually always lose it. Uh, this uses that to agitate. It's a, basically a rechargeable uh, motor that spins uh, your film one way. I don't know if it does one way and then the other, but a claim that it's good for black and white developing or color developing with like a sous style thing like the Cinestill, uh, you know, chemical temperature heater. So you can basically do like a water bath, put your Patterson tank in there, keep the temperature at 38 degrees Celsius, put the little Henry thing on your Patterson tank and have like a mini Jobo uh, that will turn like I said, I don't know exactly if it turns one way than the other, if it's uh, always stopping in the same spot and so on, but you can go and check it out. It's on eBay currently, they're being made in Europe and they're like around 100 euros. So if that's something that, you know, uh, 
makes you excited, you can go ahead and check it out. I might be getting some in and giving one away because they offered and I think that'd be cool to test it out, see how it looks and how it works and maybe give one to a viewer that wants to use it. Probably will give both of them because I usually don't do a lot of hand development with color in black and white. Um, then we have uh, Logmar Gento Super 8 camera in development. This is news to me, uh, but the whole company is news to me. I guess the people that are super uh, into Super 8 and cinematography um, know about it. Logmar made a few film cameras, or at least a film camera back in the day, or a few years ago. They're working on a new Super 8 camera. Their website is down. Don't ask me why. It seems to be down for overflow of people or they haven't paid the domain, but the specs are pretty cool. Uh, seems to be wanting to give like very good sync of frames on Super 8 and the quality almost of 16 uh, mil with Super 8 cartridges, which are cheaper and more accessible most of the times. So that's pretty cool. It's called Logmar. I'll leave the link below, but like I said, the link doesn't seem to work seemed to work a couple of days ago, not anymore. Then we have the Ligero, 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 L-R, uh, L-I-G-E-R-O-L-G, -E and the Ganso, uh, I think he's Spanish, uh, coming, and the Ojo Finder. Uh, these are three products that are 3D printed products. One uh, shoots with a Lomo graph lock and also Mamiya press lenses, Mamiya mm, Super and so on. But also he made a version for the uh, Goose, uh, the Polaroid 600 SE lenses that uses the Lomo graph lock. So it's the same concept as the camera dactyl, but you hold the back and you basically can shoot uh, Instax wide with these cameras and Mamiya lenses. And he also made the uh, Finder. The Finder is pretty cool because it's way smaller than the 75 Finder that you have for the Goose or the Mamiya Press. Uh, and it seems to be limited. I don't know if he's reusing the glass or so on, but they're pretty cool. I'll leave the link below uh, to the Legero LG and the Ganso LG um, for anybody that wants to get one. Then we have Vladimir, Vladimir uh, 4x5 focus target. Uh, Vladimir makes uh, focus targeting for DSLR or digital camera scanning. Uh, basically what you do, he makes these negatives or positives can't really tell you, I guess they're positives, uh, that have super defined little micro lines for those people that want to have the best contrast and the best sharpness and the best everything when they're scanning. It's actually quite important for a lot of people. He makes them in 35, he makes them in 120. Uh, my co-workers here, Valoy, have some in their store. I know Pixelator uh, has them in their store with Hamish Gill. Um, very cool thing, but he's working on uh, four by fives. Why would it be important for 4x5? If you're scanning your 4x5 uh, film with a camera, be it for Instagram, be it for reproduction, be it for archival, be it for whatever rocks your boat, you wanna maybe get the best sharpness. This is great because you can take a picture and see if your holder or your lens is distorting in the corners and so on, and you can compare a line and so on. So this is pretty cool. It is not yet available, but he is gathering interest. So I would suggest you go ahead and the link below and let him know that you're very interested I myself am interested because I do shoot more large format than uh, 35 and 120, and I do enjoy the fastness of digital scanning with a camera. Then we have a Reveni updates, and yes, updates with an S. Reveni has come basically almost to the end of their spot meter Kickstarter. Matt has been informing of every single step he's done. He's been really good, also informing me. Thank you, Matt, really appreciate it. He's made uh, a backpack for double A's for the Rebeni spot meter. It seems to be that the Rebeni spot meter is battery hungry in the cold. So the double A's are widely available batteries. They last longer. I guess they keep the heat longer than the smaller battery. And he's made this gizmo. It's still not available, but he's working on it. Uh, and also he's had a problem with some of the updates killing the spot meter. And uh, you should go check it out if you have a spot meter and you need to update it. Seems to be that when he's charging, when you're doing the upgrade of the spot meter, and I might say this wrong, so please read the blog for the real information. When you're updating the spot meter, if it loses any bit of power, basically there's a moment that's critical and it forgets the program, it can't boot again. So he has to reboot them with his 
programming and so on. So Matt's heard of four or five uh, devices that have this problem. So make sure you read how to do it properly and he's already written a script or programming to fix this bug on his spot meter. So yeah, that's the news uh, for this week. Next week, I will be in Chicago, USA, going to Miami, then going to Chicago. If you know of anything that's interesting to see apart from central camera in Chicago, photography wise, analog, please let me know. I'm very curious to see, be it a repair store, parts and so on. I am going for work, so that's my base there. But let me know and um, that'd be great to be there. I'm very excited. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks to all the sponsors. Remember, you can send any information to the email below. I'll try to be here next week, but um, considering the travel and everything, I might not be able to, but I'll see you guys if not in two weeks. See you in the next one.